disqualifications. 1971-1977, MBCHB, Royal College of Medicine, Mosul, Iraq. 1984, FRCS, Royal College of Surgeons of Ireland. 2014, FRCP, Royal College of Physicians, UK. 2017, FRCS, Royal College of Surgeons of England, London. Professor Dr. Muzaham's present appointments from 2014 up to date. He is the president of Nineveh University, Mosul, Iraq, professor of surgery, supervisor of governmental effort to restore services, the province of Nineveh, 2017, and president of Christ Cell, 2019. About his previous appointments, Professor Dr. Muzaham has many previous appointments. I gladly will mention some of them. From 2014 to 2018, Supervisor of the Development of al Hamdani University, Mosul, Iraq. From 2011 to 2012, President of Decreed University. From 2010 to 2011, Dean of College of Medicine, University of Mosul, Iran. From 1993-1994, Visiting Surgeon, Department of General and Laparoscopic Surgery, Transport Health Authority, Kent, United Kingdom. From 1989-1997, Senior Lecturer, Department of Surgery, College of Medicine, University of Mosul, Mosul, Iraq. And I just want to notify that Professor Dr. Muzahim has many other previous appointments I haven't mentioned here. About his principal surgical interests, laparoscopic surgery, benign and malignant breast diseases, disease, colorectal cancer, and medical education. Uh, talking about the recent uh, conferences, workshops, and courses of uh, Professor Dr. Muzaham, uh, he has about uh, 13 conferences, workshops, and courses. I will mention some of them. RCS England plus University of Sharika Day Faculty Development plus Basic Surgical Skills course to train the trainer 30 May to June. 2014. Two, Laparoscopic Tunisian Surgical Society Conference, Tunisia, April 2010. And three, a joint cooperation agreement with IREX for the training and rehabilitation of cadres from the University of Nineveh, a subject related to academic IBTE in 2016. Professor Dr. Muzahim has many publications. Some of them are, number one, in 2018, Global Journal on Quality and Safety in Healthcare, Lessons to Improve Quality to Oncology Practice, Roadmap to Fill the Global Gaps. Two, uh, Secret Medical Journal, Laparoscopic Management to Hepatic Hydrated Disease, what makes it safe and effective. And about 29 other publications. Finally, the books of Professor Dr. Muzaham, uh, 2005 Surgical Picture, Test al published Publishing, Mosul, Iraq. 2007 Clinical Texas and General Surgery, a theory publication, University of Mosul. 2018 Translated Book, Goals of Higher Education. And finally, in 2019, Nineveh Medical College, Diary of Phrases from Ashes After Liberation, and many other books. Uh, Dr. Muzahim, thank you so much for your listening, and thanks for all the listeners as well.
Thank you very much for your introduction. Thank you. Uh, and now the keynote speaker, Professor Dr. Muzaham Al-Khayat. Doctor, if you would like to start, please. Okay. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Saadat Rais Jamia Al Tafania Al Shimalia, Mustad Doctor Mufa Hamdun and Muhtaram Zumalai Zemilati Al Havur Fil Motamar, Shkurukum Idawatili Al Kahavi Al Mohavara. And I would like to also to thank not only the uh, Northern Technology University but also the Minister of Higher Education, uh, Staff Dr. Nabil Kavam Abdul so Can I share my lecture with you? Yeah, of course, Doctor. If you would like to start. Uh, the title is going to be During COVID 19 Is Assessment for Medical Students a Challenge? As you know, COVID-19 has impacts on education all over the world. And thank goodness we managed to complete the, uh, the teaching and learning procedures, but the challenge of assessment is, is, is one of the uh, things we have to think about it twice. You know, new teacher rules toward being an online teacher very important. The online teacher has to be uh, an evaluator, technologist, researcher, designer, administrator, and Certifier and estimator. These are very important for the teacher online to to achieve his uh, goals. My first question is medical assessment important and you can see from the pictures students may perceive the examiner as someone whose aim is to catch them out and the other photo student may perceive the examiner as a threatening assessment procedures have been criticized not only by students but by professional bodies by those even outside medical field. So we have six questions to ask about assessment. Why we assess the student? Who should assess the student? What should be assessed? How should the student be assessed? When and where should the student be assessed? These six questions should be in front of the assessment com committee in every department during the traditional teaching or during the e-learning. Why we assess the student? We want to decide whether the learner is fit for the purpose. So he can go to community or to the hospitals, achieving the goals. We want to assess the student to progress during the education or training program. Also grading or ranking the students to identify the best students is important. Enhancing the student's learning. Also, assessment is motivating the student. It provides feedback for the teacher and 
it brings innovation. What is more important is how should the student be assessed? We have to change. The method should be reliable. You can see from the diagram that means reliable, accessible, and consistent. The method should be valid, valid, valid to assess the learning outcomes. The method should be feasible, it's applicable. And the assessment should have a positive impact on students' learning. And very important. What I mean is, if assessments are new technologies or new methods of assessing the learning outcome, then we can have different way of students to learn. For example, you for new technologies in medical assessment, then the students would spend less time reading books and spending more time being in hospitals or teaching his same skills on simulators or models, which is very, very important. But from a student when he when he, when he graduates really is to have to achieve have achieved the competence we we implement. When should the student be assessed? Traditionally, I mean, we leave the assessment to the end of the course or to the final exam, and that really needs to be changed completely. We need to assess the student during the course and not only at the end of the course final examination. And this in course assessment provides feedback to the student and the teacher and a lot of time for remediation. This in course assessment that means there is a progress test. Repeatedly, we assess the students at time intervals throughout the course. And this is very important if e learning is going to be next year and or even if it is blended. The test can provide useful feedback to students and to the evaluator. How should the student be assessed? Medically, I think even in other, in other fields, three aspects. Number one, written and computer-based assessment. Number two, clinical and performance-based assessment that to assess the performance of the students. And number three, which is new, I advise every university to implement it. It is an e-portfolio assessment. And that's related also to what I had in post assessment. Let us see this this photo. It is a range of assessment tools are many, many way of assessing. And we go to number one, written and computer based assessment. And to be effective, we have to know why we do an assessment. It is for the benefit of knowledge of the student, but also can apply on problems, on clinical problems or technology problems. And you know, written assessment and computer based assessment, we need to have a stimulus to the student in this examination, and we need for the student to give us response. And the assessment committee have to sit down and discuss what the stimulus give to the student and how. Is it going to be long essay questions or short essay or short statements or short clinical scenario or problem based learning, PBL or multiple choice questions? or extended multiple 
questions. Looking to, to the problem we're going to face next year, I think we also need to ask ourselves, is it going to be one-way examination or is it going to be two-way examination? One-way examination, we give the stimulus and we wait for the student response with the time table. And then the students have to train on this schedule. It is, for example, two hours examination. The question needs to be given one after another. When he finishes the first, he goes to the second. So there will be less cheating among the students. And law and also less communication between them. For example, it is it is 60 questions. So each question is for two minutes. If he doesn't answer the question in two minutes, Doctor. he cannot move to the other question. So we need to think about options. Number two is a clinical and performance-based assessment. And that's very important. Because there's not only test the knowledge, it is also other parts of the triangle, the behavior, the skills, and the competence of the students. And that's the performance-based assessment. What we need really need number one patient. We need the patient. Traditionally, we have real patients, but if if COVID nineteen is going to continue, then we have to think of simulated patients. We train patients. We train uh, lay people how to be patients. And we achieve certain form man's based assessment on these simulated patients. So we have simulators and models. And on models, we can apply skills to be done by students, as you see from the pictures examination of fear, taking a blood sample from artery, examining blood pressure. These are all competences we have to examine. Or computer-based simulations, which is also a new technology. Number two, assessment committee has to study approaches to clinical and performance assessment. And you can see that there are many, many approaches among the world, among the universities. The objective structured learning examination is called number one, but number two, the OSCE objective structured clinic examination is well known all over the universities. That a clinical examination to assess performance and clinical competency, or many clinical evaluation exercises. And so on. If you look at the last one, a quality clinical imaging and video assessment, SIVA. In this SIVA, you can examine 50 students, for example, in one go. You put, for example, 40 or 50 uh, images or videos, and two or three questions about every image or video and there is short answer or short response from the students. And Minyowski, you can examine the students online. Every student can be examined by four or five examiners at the same time to assess his or his clinical performance.
So there are options among us next year. Implementing clinical assessment is very important before we do the examination. Commit assessment committee has to sit down and, and decide number one, a blueprint. A blueprint should be prepared. And the blueprint includes the competencies or learning outcomes to be assessed or need the students to be examined. And for each outcome, we're going to do put the assessment method to adopt. For example, if you want to assess how we examine uh, the neck of the patient, then the assessment method is going to be OSCO, OSCI. If you want to assess, for example, communication, then it can be assessed either by clinical, uh, by written examination, or even by portfolio, which I am going to speak about, or even by uh, uh, OSC. If you want to assess, uh, for example, uh, lumps or masses, or a clinical sign, we can assess it by SIVA. We put a label on a picture and ask the patient what is, what is this label, and then we add one or two questions about this label. So blueprint is very important because then all the team can share in this clinical performance-based assessment. Then we select the method. And we select the examiner and student's profile and feedback. And you can see here the examiner performance. The performance of the student is not only one, one thing, it's many, many things. You see, it is clinical skills, practical procedure. <laughs> patient investigation, patient management, communication skills, health promotion, information technology, medical sciences, attitudes, decision making. So it is, it is personality and performance assessment. And you can see from the diagram, it can, he can achieve in some aspects higher degree and it's probably just minimum expected standard. But overall, the whole is very important. So really, the assessment has been changed all over the world. Our universities, our colleges, we need to start new technologies in assessment. The next assessment, which I need to pass it to all my colleagues, what we call it e-portfolio assessment. In Arabic, let us mention it as Melfil in Jazz. This e-portfolio assessment, I think this is one of the most important assessment on online or distance teaching and learning. We have to know what is a portfolio, why portfolio, what are the advantages, and how we implement portfolio assessment in your practice. And also, a student committee had to plan for this assessment. Planning is very important, as you see from the diagram. Let us go to the definition. E portfolio is a collection of evidence during the course, during the year. Not only the examination. And this evidence demonstrates that learning has taken place. That there is attendance from the students in the electronic classroom. That there is share from the students. 
and that 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 he he writes reports he answer questions he demonstrate his ability in the examination during lecture or after the lecture and so on so it is commutative in the sense that it contains work collected over a period of time rather than snapshot it's not a picture and so on and finish so portfolio is different from a book it contains both the quantitative the great evidence as well as qualitative description and i think portfolio it should be by replacement instead of writing a report as we have in this year uh, examination report to be given for each subject the portfolio is more more sensible because it includes evidence of practical procedures carried out by students it even includes video reports of the critical experience he learned and it includes evaluation of every performance or every or interview or report he's done and you can also by portfolio to outcome based education because also we can assess the attitudes of students during the year during the in cost assessment we can assess his professionalism his reflection his behavior even assessment of his attitude by his peer by his by his friends portfolio is a powerful tool for both learning and assessment it reinforces students approach students can depend on itself you will find uh, uh, references from the papers from the uh, internet you will you will try and uh, expand knowledge apply his uh, for what you then a personal approach that for us what individuals to achieve during the year continuously rather than sorry, more sorry, than sorry. Than yes sorry for interrupting you but i think there's a problem with the sound please if you can just uh, can you hear me now it's better it's better right now yes yes do you want me to go back to the last uh, slide or is you okay yeah it's okay it's okay thank you so much then the assessment has to implement portfolio assessment which is very important and that's not a difficult one we have to define the purpose to define the competences to be assessed define the portfolio content and so on This, this is a, uh, a copy of, and uh, you can also update this one. This is the description you put on this competence you need And so, you can mark on each session, on each uh, competence. The use of our portfolio of assessment is the response to medical education also including emphasis on professionalism the need of student more responsibility for their own at the end my conclusion is we need to be better so understanding of basic concept and assessment will help you to do a good job as a teacher thank you very much Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Muzaham. Now, uh... excuse me, Mustafa, please. Yes. Uh, thank you all so much, Dr. Muzaham, actually, for this uh, speech and this presentation. It's amazing and very benefit.
Now with us, Dr. Mufak Hamdoun, I would like to thank you deeply in, in this uh, keynote speaker. Yes, Dr. your mic with you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nashkar al-Ustaz, Dr. Wazaham al-Khayyad, Rais Jami'at Nainawa, ala al-mawdu' al-qayyim al-lazhi tarahu, wa al-mawdu' hadith al-sa'a, wa al-ma'lumat al-qayyim al-lazhi adla biha li sada al-bahithin. Natamanna al-tawfiq li al-Ustaz al-Dr. لما بذله من جهد في اعداد هذه المحاضره وشكرا جزيلا. شكرا دكتور شكرا دكتور موفق ثانك يو فيري شكرا دكتور موفق بارك الله فيك. Just one minute مصطفى. Yes, uh, I think now we should uh, start with the session. Uh, uh, sorry for this interruption. Uh, me and the committee and the Northern Technical University would like uh, to thank you and it was a great chance having you at uh, this conference. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Muzahim, uh, me and on behalf of the organizing committee, we'd like to thank you for this nice and uh, uh, great uh, talk. Uh, but I have uh, one question. Uh, regarding uh, the uh, practical uh, study and uh, skills that they gain by students, in particular the medical students and other students which involve in this practice. Uh, what's the solution? Uh, as you know, there are a barrier between, between the students and taking the blood samples or dealing with patients direct in direct contact and something like that, Italy in surgical and uh, medical uh, sciences. Uh, I know I don't know if the uh, distance learning will cover and give the students the skills that needed to complete his certificate. Which what are the solutions in your opinion we can just cope with this uh, uh, problem? In particular, the medical students and other students, as I said, uh, the dentists, uh, the veterinary students, and other uh, students to to make like a highly qualified. Uh, after uh, they gain their certificate. Thank you very much. That's really that's a challenge. That's what I am, why I applied and I gave this lecture. It's we have to find alternative in case COVID-19 and the crisis continues for the next year. And put in our mind that there are many colleges all over the world, they use the simulators, they use the computer-based simulators. They use the, uh, uh, the labor laboratory skills technique. Uh, so in case that hospitals will be closed next year in front of our students, we have to, to use the computer for these uh, for these. Uh, to learn student visa skills. Uh, but, but anyway, a hospital, there is no alternative for hospital training at all. What One of the characteristics of Iraqi universities is that medical colleges have access to the hospitals and training inside the hospital, especially during the final year. So we need to, your question is an excellent one. And we have, as university, as university, we have to think of alternatives. Uh, but there is one thing that uh, I think we have to uh, rise. Can students go to the hospital next year, especially those students who are in the final year or in the fifth year? Can go to the hospitals? and uh, try to help in, in management of patients because we are shortage of doctors now all over Iraq. So this is, if they have an access to go back to hospitals, even if it is part-time, you know, and, with, uh, and in the classes, you know, I mean, in 
smaller classes, I think we can uh, uh, pass this challenge. Because after graduation, there is one year of practice, 12 months or two years of practice inside the hospital as a house officer. And that is, that is a completion of the sixth year training of medical students or five years training of dentist training. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank so you. much for this answer. Uh, we Dr. hope the crisis will be finished uh, soon, uh, inshallah. Uh, Dr. Muzahim, uh, now I think we have Prof. Raid from Prof. Bradford Raid. University. Yeah. Prof. Raid, you can talk with uh, Prof. Muzahim now. Hello, Prof. Raid. Assalamu alaikum. Ahlan, ahlan, Prof. الحقيقة المحاضرة very very interested يعني for all sides الحقيقة وأصور السؤال اللي the last questions is covering what I want to say really because it seemed to me as well there is a Japanese study as well showing that the medical people who uh, as well dealing with some patients for more than, for example, three to eight hours, they can get the dose of this type of virus even they are protected by a mask or even a plastic uh, cover as well on their faces. So uh, the waiting time, I mean, not the wait time, but the waiting time is very important as well dealing with the patients with COVID-19. So if I may, for example, what they said, they said, uh, if you are uh, uh, like talking with people with COVID-19, uh, usually within two, three minutes or five minutes or 15 minutes is okay, because the dose you are going to get it is more lower than you, the dose you can get it within, for example, six hours or eight hours. So in, in this case, I think even this, uh, we are trying really as well uh, to open it here and to provide the uh, two meter uh, social distances. It seemed to me as well, it will have an influence as well on the time we need to look at the student to do the, for example, uh, some practical um, laboratories or experiments really to enhance the outcome learnings, as you said, uh, and confirm it in your uh, lecture. Because it seemed to me, because we are, prop we are um, um, certified by the uh, IET regulations and uh, certified by them uh, to deliver the learning outcomes. And part of it as well, we must uh, provide the practical aspects of the learning outcomes to the students. So this is a very challenge. Uh, we need to think about it as well, like uh, 30 minutes or 15 minutes or, or maximum one hour uh, with the social distances, maybe we are going to have a, a short uh, type of those will not affect the, pay, uh, the people working or the people uh, or the student working in a lab. On top of that, we need type of uh, ventilations, even for the labs, uh, type of filtering uh, to let that uh, practical work continue to provide as well, you know, the practical work is very important than, as you mentioned, uh, the uh, simulated and other uh, type of tools we can adopt it for medical people. But uh, touching the patient is very, very important. Even talk with the patient is very, very important. As, yes, I agree. As you said, you. is the real patient is the top priority for the students. And thank you, really. Thank you for um, giving that uh, is um, a drive. Uh, for all academic staff uh, to listen what's going on is very dangerous. Virus is very, very dangerous. And uh, if you work with the medical people, I think in my advice now, I'm thinking uh, the health ministry uh, here or anywhere, they should think they should not expose the staff more than, for example, a few hours, not eight hours or 10 hours. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Wright. Uh, I share these views with you, and uh, I agree. Thank you very much. Uh, 
Okay, is there any other question, please? Okay, uh, Dr. Brown has... Uh, yes. Now we turn to the parallel session one with the session chair, Dr. Jalan Isamat Sifatin from Iraq, and the, and the session coordinator, Dr. Thank you again. Thank you so Dr. much, Dr. For your sharing with us. Thank, Thank you, Doctor. You. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor Muwaffaq. Thank you, everybody. And thank you to have you on the conference. Thank you. Thank very you much. very much, Doctor Muzan. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor, and you are welcome. Thanks. Okay, Doctor Fawaz, the Doctor Haytham. Now we should yeah. start with the first session. Okay. okay, I'm ready to do that. First session, Mr. Uh, Paul. Yes. Uh, um, Mr. Mustafa, please, if you found the chairs, uh, just uh, promote them to the panelists. I think the chairs will be Dr. Leit Akram. Dr. Leit, please raise Omar your hand, Dr. Leit. And Dr. Omar Talal. Uh, 